All right, Mr. Secretary, why don't you uh, take it away? Perfect. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I would like to call this uh, this meeting of the MPL policy to order. And I would also like to remind everyone that this meeting is being live streamed. So uh, please press star six on your phone. That's if you are calling in uh, to mute or unmute yourself. Uh, also, as permitted by the governor's disaster declaration dated May 27th, 2000, uh, 2022 rather, uh, the determination had been made that an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent for this board. To ensure a transparent and open meeting uh, as possible, the meeting materials were posted one week in advance. A recording of this meeting will be provided and linked on our website. And all votes will be taken by a roll call. With that, I'm asking Executive Director Aaron Adelman to call the roll. Help if I unmuted myself here. If the uh, <laughs> if the appointed member is not in attendance, uh, if the alternate could please identify yourself, um, I will call the organization name um, here. So, IDOT Secretary Osman here. CDOT here. Thank you, CMAP Beal here. CMAP President Brawley here. CTA. Uh, this is Mike Connolly uh, for President Dorba Carter. Thank you very much. Cook County. Good morning, here. Thank you. Uh, Council of Mayors. Here. Mayor Schilke, thank you. Uh, DuPage County. FHWA. Arlene Pover here. Thank you. Uh, FTA. Illinois State Tola Highway Authority. Good morning, Lonnie's here. Good morning. Uh, Kane County? Uh, Corrine Pirog is here. Thank you. Kendall County? Uh, Scott Keppel attending for Chairman Grabber. Thank you. Lake County? Good morning, Shane Schneider attending for Chair Hart. Thank you. McHenry County? Scott Hennings for Chairman Bueller. Metra? Lynette Civarella attending for Jim Dewinsky. Thank you. Pace? Good morning, Melinda Metzger for Chairman Kwasniewski. Thank you. RTA? Uh, Jill Leary for the RTA. Thank you. Will County? Elaine Bottomley for County Executive Jennifer Bettino Tarrant. Thank you. And Class One Railroads. We have a quorum, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. On to item two. And those are uh, some changes and, and announcement I wanted to make. We will have two new members of the MPO Policy Committee. One of the names you just heard is uh, Lindsay Douglas, is the new member for the Class 1 Railroad. And uh, Lanier Griffin, who had joined us today, is the new member for the Illinois Toll Highway Authority. Um, Lindsay started at the Illinois Wisconsin um, Senior Director for Public Affairs with Union Pacific Railroad uh, this last January. And Lindsay, prior to working with UP, she did serve as a Deputy uh, Secretary for the Kansas DOT. Lanier, uh, whom a lot of you know, uh, was appointed as an Interim Executive Director of the Illinois Tollway in March 22nd. Lanier has 22 years of engineering experience and has been with the tollway since 2013. So Lanier, since you are on, if you would like to add on, add anything, you are, you are more than welcome. Thank you, Secretary Osmond. Just a pleasure to be here. I had the opportunity to meet with Director Alleman uh, last week, which I appreciated that opportunity. Look forward to continuing to work with all of you as we progress the region. Well said, thank you. We also unfortunately have one member who is retiring in September. Arlene Corker, whom a lot of you have known will be, will have served some 21 years in various roles, 
during her, her tenure with Federal Highway Administration. Uh, if you recall, she attended her first meeting as a member of this uh, committee back in June of 2019. That's when she was appointed as a division administration uh, administrator for Illinois. Prior to it, she has been uh, division administrator in, in, in a couple of other states and she came through the ranks. Um, Darlene, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your leadership. And um, on a personal note, I appreciated your uh, friendship. I appreciated the, uh, your candor, your counsel and your guidance. And, and we all know here that you have been a huge asset uh, not just, uh, you know, uh, for individual agencies, uh, for the state of Illinois as a whole. So we thank you and we wish you the best of luck. And likewise, if you'd like to say a few words, you are more than welcome, Carly. Well, okay. I didn't know I was going to start out this morning tearing up. Thank you so much, Secretary. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, I don't know that I contributed much, but um, it was easy to come alongside such great partners who are stewarding, you know, the transportation network and system in the in the great state of Illinois. And I just I just appreciate all of the cooperation, all of the partnership, and and all of the strides we've made. And and uh, you're definitely poised to make even greater strides um, in the in the coming year. So. I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's obviously a bittersweet moment for me as well, um, but but thank you for your kind words. I appreciate the partnership and the friendship very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. On to item uh, 201, and those are uh, mega application for the Northeastern Illinois, basically our area. Um, I just wanted to bring everybody uh, up to date on what had been done behind the scene. And I just wanted to make, as you all are aware, IIJA created numerous, numerous federal discretionary grant opportunities. The department does believe Illinois is well suited and uniquely, uniquely situated to be successful in this grant application due to our significant need as a number one and our multimodal transportation system. We believe there is significant opportunity to collaborate with our partners. And there have been several meetings to do just that. There have been three notices, three notices of funding opportunities for highways since IIJA came out. We have taken advantage and applied during the two that have just closed. For Ray's uh, grant, we have applied for 17th Avenue, 9th Avenue, and this Plains Avenue structures over I-290. These will improve access to transit, modernize traffic signals, and pedestrian accommodations, and replace these three structures. For MEGA and Infra grants, we have applied for I-290 modernization project in collaboration with CTA. We have also applied for create WA1 segment, that's the Ogden Junction, in collaboration with the numerous create partners. We have also applied for Chicago slash Michigan East, East project in collaboration with Amtrak, Metra, City of Chicago, and Cook County. Uh, a commitment that we have made internally that we will continue to evaluate opportunities as they become available. And uh, we will always look to collaborate on any project. Uh, from my vantage point, having on to 20, 2050 regionally significant projects identified as priorities do assist us and assist this region in showing a collaborative list of priority projects. We need to continue to evaluate those priorities and readiness to show collaboration specifically to our partner at the US DOT as we compete at the national level. So uh, with that, and given that this CMAP have supported in convening stakeholders in this region and around the recent mega grant application, 
I would like to work. I would like you actually to work with the uh, with the transportation committee to form a small advisory group that work with CMAP staff and the chair and the co-chair of the transportation committee to review existing subcommittees and working group to, and to consider additional groups that may be re required to appropriately inform or manage the new work from IIJA, including potential discretionary opportunities. So please work with the chair and co-chair of the transportation committee to identify members of the following group to participate in the initial review. County, municipal, transit, city of Chicago, and council of government. So um, with that, I would like to move to, if there's no comment or, or discussion on this topic, I'd like to move to item 202. Any discussion, any comments? Um, no, we will certainly work with the transportation co-chairs to bring together a representative group of stakeholders to talk about subcommittees and um, to help us make sure that we're prioritizing the right projects and items for future work across the region. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Yeah, thank you. So on to item 202, and that's FHW and FTA, the TMS certification update. With that, on to you, Arlene Cole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Um, and speaking on behalf of my, my sister agency, the, the Federal Transit Administration, um, I just want to let the committee know that on May 31st, we issued a joint letter, FHWA and FTA, uh, certifying the planning process in the Northeastern Illinois Transportation Management Area. This was re a required action for the MPO to continue to operate in good standing. And we thank all the partners who were involved in maintaining and growing the high quality work that takes place as part of the MPO. We have a draft report detailing a number of findings and recommendations and commendations that will provide well, that will provide to CMAP and IDOT as soon as pretty soon. And then our final report will be released shortly after that. At this point, we can say there were no corrective actions um, identified in the report and the findings are very consistent with the initial presentation that we gave, well, that John and John Paul gave in March as part of our on-site discussions with CMAP and other partner staff. We, we, meaning John Donovan, will present the findings of this final report at the next meeting of the policy committee in October. Um, while we touch on almost all aspects of the MPO process, I wanted to highlight two areas that we would like to keep a focus on. First, we're very encouraged by the efforts underway as part of the safety action agenda. While all requirements are being met, I think we can all agree that the continued prevalence of fatalities and serious injuries on our transportation system is just unacceptable. We believe in a comprehensive, safe systems approach will, and it, that's needed and it, at all levels. Okay, let me do that again. We believe a comprehensive, safe systems approach is needed at all levels of government to make strides in moving the region forward for our safety goals. We believe in the potential of this effort so much that we're also adding a safety and mobility staff position in our Chicago satellite office to help assist these efforts in an active and continuous way. We really do need an all hands on deck mentality in attacking issues such as speed management, emergency response, non-motorized users, and safety education if we truly expect to see a change in results. Secondly, we have reviewed the CMAP plans for greater compliance with ADA Title II and transition plan requirements, and we're pleased with the process that's been identified. For far too long, the most vulnerable users of our systems have not had full support, and they deserve it. As we prepare and plan for our full participation, as we plan for their full participation in our system. You know, this is understandably a long-term process that will require continued attention and investment of resources. But I'm, in, I'm encouraged to see these steps being taken and the promise the Illinois and promise the Illinois division will continue to place a priority on assisting the region to see this work completed. So again, thank you to all the partners 
who have helped during this review process, but even more so for all the efforts that take place in the time between the reviews, because that's where all of the strides are made, right? We just check in um, on, a, on occasion. And so the work gets done during those times between the reviews. So your continued partnership is much appreciated. And together, I believe we can continue to position this region for even greater achievements as I, as I indicated earlier. And I'd be happy to take any questions now, or as I said earlier, the expert, John Donovan, will be back in October to provide a more formal summary of the review. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene. Any questions, comments? I could just add to, I th thanks to FHWNA and FTA for being flexible in your process this year. I know we were able to hold the meetings both in person and remotely, um, but that uh, working with your team um, and your staff and F FTA staff as well through this process made it seamless for us. Um, and I just wanted to publicly thank our staff who put in the work to get the answers that you needed um, for this process overall. So thanks to our team. And I know also thank you to RTA staff too who participated actively in the process as well. Yes, and, and you made the, the uh, hybrid, what we call hybrid um, meeting work very, very well. I got a lot of compliments uh, how your staff handled that and how easily it was to achieve both virtual and in-person participation in that review. So thank you, Aaron. Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, on to item number three, and that's the appointment sub subcommittee. As we all know, each year we appoint a nominating committee to bring forward a name or names for a vice chair for the following year. Aaron, I will work with you to convene the appropriate group of individuals in accordance with our bylaws to, to meet before our next meeting uh, this coming fall. Any, any question, comments on that item? On to item four, and that's the approval of the minutes. Uh, from uh, the March 10th, 2022 meeting. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, from that meeting, please state your name when you motion or second. Aaron, will you please read the roll, roll call? But can we get a motion? Yeah. So moved, can Commissioner we get a motion? Yeah. Second, Ms. Killen. Thank, Thank you. you. Aaron, would you please read the roll call? Thank you. Ida? Again. Yes. Sita? Yes. CMAP Beal? Yes. CMAP Brawley? Yes. CTA? Yes. Cook County? Yes. Council of Mayors? Yes. DuPage County? Illinois State Atolla Highway Authority? Yes. Kane County? Yes. Kendall County? Yes. Lake County? Yes. McHenry County? Yes. Metra? Yes. Pace? Yes. RTA? Yes. Will County? Yes. And I will recognize the county, Will County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarrant has joined the meeting as well. Thank you, the motion carries. Thank you. And with that, um, everyone due to a commitment, I, I just could not change the week schedule. I must leave the meeting now. And in the absence uh, of a vice chair and following Robert's rule of or, rules of order, if you don't know what that is, Google it, because I just did. I'm appointing uh, Mayor Jeff Schelke to serve as chair pro tem for the remainder of the meeting. Mr. Mayor, it's all yours and good day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Well, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for your good efforts and your continued good work. Uh, I'm glad to serve as the uh, chair pro tem for the remainder of the many, uh, meeting. As those of you who've been around a long time will remember, I, I was vice chairman for two terms back many years ago, and there was a situation where the state transportation secretary couldn't make most of the meetings. So for about a two-year period, I ran the policy committee meeting. So hopefully I remember how to do this. Uh, moving first then to the executive director's report, Aaron. 
Great, thank you very much. You know, I know for the last couple of years we've been having these meetings virtually. I would like to ask that this committee plan to meet in person for our October meeting. Now, I don't have a crystal ball and I also don't control sort of uh, sub variants of COVID, but um, I think it would be good just given the fact that we have a lot of work in front of us, whether it's related to the infrastructure bill um, or thinking about sort of the next steps as we look at um, approval of the uh, update to the 2050 plan, but then really the work begins after that on thinking about how we've been impacted by this pandemic, how our transportation modes have shifted, um, and the policies and strategies we'll need to work collaboratively on moving forward. So if you could just add a little bit of travel time to your October calendar date, because um, we would like to have that in person jointly with the board. That'll be our joint meeting with the board. Um, as Secretary Osmond noted here, I'll just highlight a couple things from the project collaboration. You know, we were at the request of Senator Durbin's office asked to bring partners together to provide a briefing with our congressional delegation on regionally significant projects and what we've been doing behind the scenes to make sure that this region is appropriately positioned to achieve some of the funding opportunities that are in front of us. So um, we've had many of you in the room in these discussions, um, but I think one of the things that we've really been focused on is that the only region for the only way for our entire region to benefit and receive the maximum benefits from the infrastructure bill is by working together and not competing for resources. I emphasize that the future law, of course, brings this once in a lifetime opportunity to change the future of our transportation system. And I think it's clear that many of you have been really thinking about this and really working hard together to make that happen. Um, including IDOT and CTA jointly working together on the 290 multimodal corridor project, um, Amtrak's Union Station in partnership with the state, the city, and the county, um, and MEGA's uh, Metra UP North Line from Fullerton to Addison also went in for a MEGA project um, program uh, funding as well. Um, the region's also really well positioned for infra freight grants for this round of funding. So as the secretary mentioned, WA1, the Ogden Junction along Western Avenue corridor in the city of Chicago, and CDOT also put forth a bridge rehabilitation project, a program of bridges around the Calumet River to support freight and people movement near the Illinois International Port District. Um, I think we all agree that these are projects that we need to move forward on, but I know that there are more of them out there. So our goal is to bring together a, a subset of stakeholders that are here around the table to have some working meetings. Um, I know that from just looking across the country, there have been a number of states and regions that have put together prioritized lists, consensus lists for the grant applications. And now that we have a schedule of when the federal grants will be available, I think that really allows us to be able to say which projects and what phases of those projects are ready to go and come to a consensus around how we coordinate and collaborate on those applications. So there will be more invitations coming to you all and your staffs um, to be a part of those conversations moving forward. Um, I wanted to also share with you too, as anticipated, the governor recently signed the legislation that requires CMAP and its MPO policy committee in coordination with the RTA to develop and submit a report of legislative recommendations to the governor and the General Assembly by January 1st, 2024. The law requires that the recommendations address long-term financial challenges to our regional transit system, along with looking at other issues and measures that aim to improve people safely, um, the movement of people safely, securely, cleanly, you know, and we have been working closely, our teams um, with the RTA on this. So we are currently finalizing our mobility recovery work, which is looking at some of the changes in travel patterns across our region and remote work um, and future alternative scenarios. Um, but that combined with the work that RTA has been doing on their strategic planning process will provide us with a good framework for moving this project forward. So. Our partnership with RTA will continue our agency's long uh, history of working together on these issues. So um, we will probably have a lot more to talk with you about in the near future around this project. And I think as we look to some of the things that are necessary to change, again, we'll need partnership from all of your agencies, I believe, you know, and it's going to be really crucial moving forward. And then you'll hear, um, 
from my staff later on the agenda that this week the 2050 plan will go out for public comment. Um, Transportation Committee also saw it last week. The draft plan will be linked on CMAP's homepage at www.cmap.illinois.gov. Public comment will be open from June 10th to August 13th. The public can share comments by email at onto2050 at cmap.illinois.gov. Um, we will also be sharing with all of you the contents um, that you can, and content that you can share with your constituents as well as we look to getting public comment on the plan update. For the benefit of the public listening or watching, this update meets our federal requirements. And the purpose is really to adjust the data, the information um, that was in the ONTO 2050 plan to understand where we are currently. We also take a look at our regionally significant projects and analyze and refine the financial plan for the region's transportation system. So as required, we will hold a public hearing um, and incorporate comments into the draft plan, which will come to the board and the MPO jointly in October. So in closing, um, I just wanted to share with you all that a familiar face to the MPO and an accomplished and highly respected leader at our agency has accepted a new, um, a new opportunity and will be leaving us later this month. Uh, Deputy Executive Director of our Finance and Administration, Angela Manning Hardiman, has successfully led the team through a number of challenging times, whether it um, has been COVID and getting our IT systems all running online and working with her team, staff changes, um, thinking about our move and helping to coordinate the facilities move from the Sears Tower to the old post office. So I just wanted to publicly thank Angela. Um, you know, we thanked her yesterday at the board meeting too, but we do want to continue to wish her all the best as she moves on in her new role. Angela, I don't know if you're on. I think you are, I saw you. Did you wanna say anything, Angela? No, no, just thank you, Erin. Um, just it's been an uh, honor and privilege to work with the uh, MPO committee and all of our partners. And I will miss the agency and all the great work. I'll be watching from afar uh, and I'm just a phone call away. So thank you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. All right, um, turning it back over to you, Mayor Schilke. Thank you, Erin. Uh, our next item is the CMAP board report, Matt Broley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'm pinch hitting today for uh, Leanne Redden. So uh, I'll give the update. The um, CMAP board met. Uh, we canceled our April meeting, uh, but we met in May and June. At the May meeting, staff presented the on to 2050 plan update, including the financial plan, regionally significant projects, socioeconomic forecasts, and performance measures. Uh, the board also approved contracts for new payroll and human resources management system and for services to conduct local community ADA self-evaluation and transition plan training. Uh, the board uh, additionally approved cost increase for the Chicago Inclusive Regional uh, Economy Outreach Project and the Great Crossing Feasibility Project. And lastly, staff presented on the equitable engagement in the efforts uh, and st uh, strategies that CMAP will employ to garner interest from local community groups in the equitable engagement program, such as compensating the groups for their time and expertise. And then at the June meeting uh, yesterday, the board approved a contract for the project management and implementation of the new enterprise resource planning system. Uh, staff presented the draft version of the ONTO 2050 plan update, which will be out, going out for public comment on June 10th through August 13th. And this is present, will be presented today. And then additionally presented today will be the uh, same presentation from yesterday. Uh, it's the onto 2050 update and the 2023 to 2028 tip conformity analysis and tip amendment. And that's my update. Thank you, Mayor uh, Broly. Uh, next item is the Council of Mayors report, which I will give. And it is as follows. At the April 19th, 2022 meeting, the Council of Mayors Executive Committee received a CMAP update a STP project selection committee and an IDOT local roads update as well. The committee was then given an overview of the on to 2050 update process by CMAP director, deputy director, Joseph Salma. And the committee also was given an update on the recent work of their local government network. The next meeting is scheduled for July 19th, 2022. At an earlier meeting on January 25th, 2022, the Council of Mayors Executive Committee received updates 
from the STP Project Selection Committee and the IDOT Bureau of Local Roads staff then provided an overview of the CMAP safety action agenda. This presentation was followed by an overview of zoning reforms that communities can make to support equity and housing choice. Next, CMAP staff gave an update on the progress of the regional social economic forecast. And finally, the committee received updates from the CMAP legislative affairs team and the local government network. The next Council of Mayors meeting will be April 19th, 2022. So that is the report from the Council of Mayors. And uh, moving on in the other, bit, other items, items for approval, uh, we'll go to 601, which is the FFY 2022 FTA sub area allocation between Indiana and Illinois and Wisconsin and Illinois. And Russell Petrolik is here to present that as I'm told. It's Terry Mayor Schalke. Oh, Terry, okay, sorry. That's okay. Good morning all. Um, before you this morning is a request for MPO endorsement of federal fiscal year 2022, section 5307, 5340, 5337, 5339, and 5310 sub area funding allocations between Illinois, Indiana, and Illinois, Wisconsin that was published uh, in on the FTA website on April 6. The RTA Board of Directors approved the allocations um, between Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission and Southeastern Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission at their May 19th, 2022 board meeting. The service board splits are provided for your information. Um, therefore, staff is requesting MPO endorsement of the funding allocations between Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. Very good. Do we have any questions on the uh, sub area allocation? If not, I would entertain a motion to approve the FFY 2022 FTA sub area allocations. So moved, RTA. Second. CMAP Raleigh. Moved by RTA, second by CMAP board for the approval. Aaron, would you please read the roll call, please? Uh, thank you, IDOT. Aye. Thank you, CDOT. Uh, CMAP Beal. Aye. CMAP Raleigh. Aye. CTA. Cook County. Aye. Council of Mayors. Aye. DuPage County. Illinois State Toll Highway Authority. Yes. Kane County. Yes. Kendall County. Yes. Lake County. Yes. McHenry County. Yes. Metra. Yes. Pace. Yes. RTA. Yes. And Will County. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, the approval for the FY 2023 sub area funding allocations is approved. We will then move to next item, which is the on to 2050 plan update by Elizabeth Scott. Uh, thank you, Mayor Schalke, and good morning, uh, MPO members. I'm Elizabeth Scott. I'm a principal policy analyst in CMAPS. Uh, Plan Implementation and Legislative Affairs Division. And I'm here this morning to talk to you all a little bit um, about the ON to 2050 update that is uh, coming out for public comment uh, beginning next week. Uh, I wanted to uh, check in with all of you about the timeline of events so everyone is crystal clear about uh, kind of like what the order of operations is moving uh, from the summer through public comment and towards uh, the adoption of the plan in the fall. Um, uh, I'm going to summarize for you what are the different elements of the plan update so that if there is an issue of um, special concern, you can uh, put your attention to that. Uh, and then finally, I'm planning to uh, spend a little time if, if you all if you all are interested in this talking about uh, where CMAP goes from here, because we're beginning scoping in FY23 
of the successor plan of ONTO 2050. Um, and, then, and then of course, uh, to discuss any uh, reflections, questions, concerns, comments that anybody might have about this plan update or the uh, process uh, to get it done. So next slide, please. So as, as I mentioned, um, you know, we wanted to talk about timeline a little bit. We have been working on this, um, you know, statutorily required update to ONTO 2050 for uh, over a year now. And we're sort of in the, in, in the end game, so to speak, at this point. So um, we have presented this uh, same content to the Transportation Committee and to the CMAP board yesterday. And now we're here with you today talking about um, the plan, up, plan update. Um, public comment will open next week. Uh, we're going to have a public hearing on August 11th uh, from, I believe, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, uh, public comment will close uh, shortly thereafter, and then staff will uh, summarize and bring to Transportation Committee and the CMAP board and, you know, any, anybody else who, who's interested to hear about it. Um, uh, what, what was the substance of the public comments we received and any changes that we made um, subsequent to the comments. And then the plan is for in October 12th uh, for the MPO and the board to adopt the plan update in your joint meeting, which, you know, as Aaron mentioned, hopefully will be um, at our new offices in person. Uh, next slide, please. So, you know, many, many of you are, are very, very familiar with the um, you know, MPO process and regional plan. Uh, but just to, to give you a sense of, of what, I, what I'm gonna talk about and what the staff have been up to, um, this update of ONTO 2050 really has uh, like two dimensions. One is uh, quantitative exercises to update our um, forecasting, our math, our quantitative understanding of the uh, proposals for investments in the region's transportation system. Uh, we, it's, it's a time when we talk to uh, the implementers and ask uh, have, if there have been changes to the, the projects that you all have put forward for consideration in the regional plan or if there are new projects <laughs> that need to be considered. Um, we also do some qualitative exercises and, and that, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit more includes uh, reviewing the accomplishments that the region has made towards our shared goals over the uh, previous four years. And in the case of this plan update, um, we have contextualized and uh, reaffirmed the vision of uh, set forward and onto 2050. And so you'll see there on the right, that's a little screenshot of um, the image on our homepage, which is uh, going to stay up during public comment, letting, letting people know where the draft documents are and what the process is uh, to comment if, if any, anyone would like to? Uh, next slide, please. And so, and so today I wanted to talk with you all a little bit about um, the different elements of the work that the staff have been undergoing to update uh, on to 2050. Um, uh, but I, I'll just, I, I would like to acknowledge at this point that uh, there are more than a dozen staff who have spent hundreds of hours on this. Uh, including, you know, numerous people with uh, very specialized technical skills. And so although I'll, I will be talking about their work today, uh, you know, we have we have the staff in the wings. Uh, should should there be questions? We have uh, some some very some very knowledgeable people who have been putting a tremendous amount of effort um, into this plan update, even though um, even though this is not the level of effort that the region Put into uh, creating onto 2050, it still is a significant effort from CMAP staff, and so I want to just acknowledge that. Next slide, please. So, so I'm going to start off, uh, you know, talking with you all a little bit about what is in the plan update narrative. So it's a, it is, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I, I hope it's an exciting 21 pages, but it's a, it's a short, it's a short document. 
um, that, that, that tries to do a few things. Um, one is uh, contextualizing the principles and reaffirming the vision of onto 2050. You know, uh, we spent three years on that uh, and had uh, engagement with, with all of you and over a hundred thousand uh, members or yeah, yeah, of the public. And the long-term goals laid out and on to 2050 still resonate. However, the experience of the last four years has, has been a lot. Uh, everyone, everyone can agree with that, I'm sure. Uh, and so the narrative talks about how um, the principle of resilience has gained new meaning as the region has uh, struggled with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it talks about how uh, the movement for racial justice, uh, you know, in the country and here in Illinois has given uh, sort of new, uh, new and new importance to the plans, um, you know, ideas about inclusive growth. So that's the basically the concept that for the region to thrive, everybody has to be able to uh, uh, thrive here in Illinois. That's talking about um, reducing inequities and enabling access to opportunity for everyone. Uh, and then finally, even though we've had generational investments uh, in the transportation system through both Rebuild Illinois and the um, IIJA, uh, a long-term sustainable source of revenue for transportation needs uh, remains elusive. Mm -hmm. And so prioritized, prioritized investment continues to be um, you know, an, is an issue of top concern. So, so we, we talk about those things. Uh, we celebrate successes. I'm gonna uh, give you all a few highlights here um, on that also. And then finally in the narrative, we summarize key findings from the technical activities. And uh, at, in the end, we preview the direction um, that we're beginning to go for the next regional plan. Uh, next slide, please. And so talking about successes, these are, these are just a few things, but one I wanted to mention to this group um, is that, uh, and, and I'm particularly proud of because it's something I've worked on, is uh, late, later this month, the uh, Illinois International Port District is set to adopt the master plan that CMAP has uh, been, been supporting in very close partnership with Cook County, the city of Chicago, IDOT and IDNR. And this is going to be, uh, you know, great, a, a great plan to lead the way forward on our, uh, you know, the freight investments that we need to make this facility as uh, productive and useful as it possibly can be. So uh, that, that team has made a lot of strides. And I, I'll just say that um, we've already um, gotten $22 million for needed repairs from uh, Rebuild Illinois competitive programs. And the partners there at the table are continuing uh, to work to gain resources to implement the needed changes at the port. So uh, excited about that. Next slide, please. Um, another, another success I wanted to um, highlight for uh, everybody is, you know, the state has passed the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, CJA, and, uh, you know, alongside with uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, uh, IIJA, um, these are significant resources to help speed um, the region's efforts to phase out carbon emissions from the energy and transportation sectors. And CMAP uh, has stood up several programs to help do our part uh, in this work. So we... Um, we're updating our greenhouse gas inventory. We are um, working on uh, a electrical uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure plan for the region. And, and we're also um, in the midst of uh, beginning a regional transportation asset vulnerability assessment. So that's trying to understand in a future where there's more heat and there's more storms, what kinds of investments we need to make to make sure our critical infrastructure stays in, stays intact and is useful for people, especially in an emergency situation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, another another uh, success and something that we're excited about that we want to share with you today is that our very close partners at the Metropolitan Mayor's Caucus 
have stood up a new program um, called the Age Friendly Communities Collaborative. And this is a, you know, a great peer learning, uh, resource sharing and um, advocacy program that's gonna help the region um, become better prepared for the very large share of senior citizens that we expect to be parts of our population um, in the future. You know, as the baby boomer generation ages and uh, health technology has thankfully advanced to the point where it has, um, we anticipate that um, in this country and in this region, a greater share than ever before of people will be over the age of 65. So thinking about um, what communities need to look like and what, kind, what services need to look like to um, create great quality of life for these residents is, uh, the, is the work of this group. And you know, it's related to uh, our ADA work and, and, other, and other kinds of pieces that are about livable communities and quality of life. Um, next slide. Uh, in the in govern in terms of governance, uh, CMAP is is very proud to have stood up uh, a program uh, in response to the recommendations of ONTU 2050 around uh, municipal capacity building. And so um, we we've done a number of things. We we've, we've been working on um, uh, coordinated investment studies, shared services studies. Uh, the biggest of which was with uh, McHenry County that caused them to go forth and uh, hire a shared services coordinator that's brought a, you know, brought a lot of efficiency to the, to the work of those communities. We've done, uh, we've done work as embedded staff in a number of communities, including uh, Calumet Park and Sauk Village in South Cook. Uh, th those teams have gone in and um, basically played municipal planner roles and attracted done done planning work, but also attracted resources to the communities, which to date has uh, included multiple millions of dollars of grants awarded. Um, we're, we're also beginning something, uh, a new a new program, a, a municipal and elected official uh, leadership academy, a training program so that people understand how to make um, great decisions at the local level. Uh, in, in context of our region's planning needs. Um, we've also, uh, through the local technical assistance program, uh, started work that uh, actively seeks to uh, implement the recommendations of the plan that we and other plans that we and others have done. So that's moving from comprehensive plan to uh, capital investment program primarily, but, uh, but also includes a number of uh, implementation activities as well. Uh, next slide. And then, and then finally, uh, I wanted to remind people that a, a big success implementing ONTU 2050 is the region's um, adoption of the STP shared fund. So that's taking 15% um, of our STP funds and allocating them towards projects uh, big, of big scope and scale that advance regional needs. So this image is of the uh, CTA Green Line Austin uh, Station Accessibility Improvement Project. So this is one of um, CTA's a, uh, ASAP All Station Accessibility Program um, investments. And through the STP Shared Fund this year, among other investments, $14 million is going from, uh, yeah, going from the Shared Fund to help advance accessibility uh, in this particular place. So lots, lots of good things happening with the STP Shared Fund. All right, next slide. So this is moving um, from the narrative aspect of the plan, excuse me, plan update into kind of the more technical activities. So I'm gonna talk about what each one of the technical activities are so that if there you know, is, is, is a special interest from anybody, they can uh, know where to find these things. So, so each one of these slides for the next period is going to represent a you know, frequently like extensive uh, paper that's available on our website, uh, documenting the work that the staff has done to um, like update and improve these technical activities. So I'll start with a, you know, a very important one. One of our MPO responsibilities is to do socioeconomic forecasting. So um, this is understanding of, uh, where we think employment and jobs will be in the future. 
And uh, having a good understanding of where we think employment and jobs will be uh, impacts all kinds of activities, but especially our understanding of travel demand in the future. Um, so this, this team uh, uh, conducts a regional forecast of employment and jobs, and then goes through a, a very detailed process to um, allocate those regional forecasts down to the local level um, at the, uh, to, to an extent that is at the quarter mile section. And one innovation that uh, we're really excited about uh, for this process is that CMAP's uh, research and analysis team has um, implemented uh, urban sim micro uh, land use micro simulation model. This is a very um, advanced, innovative, um, exciting computer technique to try and understand how the behavior of households uh, and, and the economy uh, interact to create uh, land use and real estate outcomes. So we've used that to help understand, like in 2050, we think there will be this many jobs and the, these many people. And we also think this will be the distribution of economic activity in the region. So we're, we're very excited and very proud of that. And the team has done a ton of work over a number of years to, to make that a reality. Uh, next slide. Uh, we've also updated our travel demand model. You know, as I'm sure many of you are aware, the travel model predicts uh, trips made in the region. So, it, so it's a model of travel behavior. It asks, or, or it gives us information about where are trips going, what is the purpose of the trips, what mode is being used, and what time of day are trips happening. Um, We've updated the travel model with the forecast information, but we've also calibrated it using a primary source survey, My Daily Travel, that uh, CMAC conducted in 2019. Um, and then we have improved and expanded the model to account for the um, actions of transportation network companies and taxis. Uh, so like like Uber, Uber and Lyft are now part of our model as well, uh, uh, as well as some improvements to uh, like like bike ped and our understanding of other kinds of travel movements. Uh, next slide. Uh, we, we've also received from all of you uh, updates on um, regionally significant projects like either either uh, changes to projects that are in the project in project development or new projects uh, such as PACE's uh, uh, 294 kind of like tollway um, oasis conversion into bus centers. Um, we, we have reanalyzed and reviewed the performance measures for all of the proposed projects and thought deeply about uh, cost and what these things would do for the region. Um, and in, in the end, uh, 71 regionally significant projects are put forward in the draft plan for public comment. Uh, 21 transit projects, 25 expressway projects, 25 arterial projects. And the vast majority of these were projects that are continuing forward from the onto 2050 list of regionally significant projects. Next slide. We've also um, done a lot of work to update our system performance analysis and uh, set reset targets, which is part of our MPO responsibility. And so the federal performance targets inform onto 2050 policy priorities, as well as our indicators and financial priorities. And we focus in this work on uh, five main areas, highway safety, highway condition, system performance, transit asset condition, and transit safety. So an example of how we, you know, what we do with this information is, um, you know, based, based on our assessment in this update, we've learned that a far greater share of our non-interstate but national highway system pavement condition um, has entered a, a poor condition. So underst understanding that almost, you know, 30% of the pavement in the region is in poor condition in this category helps us understand what is the cost to repair and maintain, uh, you know, repair, improve, maintain those assets. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, we've also taken a look at all of the indicators that were defined for ONTO 2050. So there's about 40 of them. Um, we adjusted the methodology on eight and we dropped one indicator that uh, was a, had to do with public health that we could never really get like good and consistent data on. Um, but just as an example for you all, um, on the right here we have, or rather on the left here, we have um, the number of traffic fatalities that in terms of the um, five-year rolling average has been going up greatly in the region. And understanding, understanding this information and in conversation with Transportation Committee and, and also all of you, uh, CMAP has realized uh, that uh, working on traffic safety through a safe systems approach is critical to deal with and turn around this situation. Similarly, um, we track transit trips towards the goal of doubling transit by 2050. And obviously, um, due to the pandemic, transit is, 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 not, is not going in that direction and is in fact, you know, significantly, ridership is significantly below pre-pandemic levels. And um, in response to that, we have, uh, we're working on our mobility recovery project thinking about how to make transit um, transit and, on, and our whole transportation system uh, thrive and work in a post-pandemic uh, region. Next slide. Um, we've also uh, taken, taken the time to update the financial plan for transportation. So a uh, reminder, the financial plan is a policy prioritization exercise. It's not a budget. Um, it is an exercise wherein um, we uh, ask how much will it cost to administer, op uh, operate, and maintain our system and to achieve our state of good repair goals. It asks what kind of system enhancements are needed most to uh, meet our regional policy goals, and that includes things like um, intelligent transportation system, ITS investments, uh, biped investments, and other sort of uh, small, smaller potentially in size, but big in impact, things that we know we need to do to keep our transportation system moving forward. Uh, we also ask, what is the cost of, uh, of new capacity anticipated through the regionally significant project uh, process? And then we compare that to uh, our, uh, what we expect from all of the revenues that come to the transportation system in the region already from you know, state and federal and uh, any, any, any source. Um, but we also think about um, what are the kinds of revenues in addition to that, that the region needs to pursue in the future to make sure that we have the resources to meet our transportation needs. So that is an assessment of what we call reasonably expected revenues. And an example of this that you know is probably tangible is that for many years, um, CMAP advocated that um, the gas tax should be uh, uh, raised and indexed to inflation. And uh, thankfully, through Rebuild Illinois, the state took that uh, action, and we were able to move those resources from the reasonably expected revenues category into our baseline revenues because it's something that we can expect and anticipate in the future. Um, other revenues that um, are currently in this category for us include um, expanded tolling, uh, resources in, anticipated to come through the transition to a road user charge of some form uh, to replace the motor fuel tax um, you know, as vehicles become more efficient. Um, talking, talking about pricing parking, uh, and talking about uh, potentially a regional fee on the activities of transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft in line with what the city of Chicago has already implemented. Uh, next slide. And then finally, coming alongside this, uh, two things that you're gonna hear about from the team later today is an update uh, to the transportation improvement program um, list. So these these are these are these are projects that are uh, moving from concept to reality, and being part of this list is how they you know receive federal funds and can can move into construction. 
And so you're gonna hear a little bit about the update to ETIP and our uh, federal fiscal year 23 to 28 TIP report that it's updated every four years. Next slide, please. Uh, you're also gonna hear, and, and the team has been doing uh, air quality conformity analysis in order to uh, support uh, a finding that demonstrates that our regionally significant projects and TIP conform to the established vehicle emissions budget. And so when we, a, a, find, a conformity finding means that the region's long range transportation plan and TIP will not cause any new violations of national air quality standards, uh, uh, worsen existing violations or delay efforts to attain air quality standards in a timely manner. Uh, next slide. And then finally, throughout all of this, um, we have been having uh, stakeholder conversations with uh, your staffs and agencies, but also with the public and anybody who wants to um, be interested in and engage with us in this process. So we've had um, five virtual roundtables in addition to kind of like one on one conversations that we've been having, where we've been talking with people about um, what, what it is that we're up to with this plan update, and then um, what CMAP is seeing in terms of new, new and emerging trends um, uh, and, and issues of concern in the region. But, but what, we, what we mostly have heard from people is concern about and consideration around increased uh, freight activity in the location of uh, warehousing facilities. Uh, concern about the future of retail and uh, retail and commercial land uses, um, and then and then finally um, a huge need to support transit and sort of I don't know if anxiety is the word, right word, but can like broad broad concern among a variety of stakeholders of a variety of backgrounds that the transit system um, continue to operate and provide the value that the region has come to expect. Um, but we're also just trying to ask people, you know, what else is of concern? Where should we try to dig in, do new work, evolve our policies and strategies um, so that CMAP can uh, play the, the best role that we, we can in the region in the future? Um, next slide, please. So that, that is, that is, uh, that is the summary of what's available uh, in our plan update. All of that information is on our homepage. It'll stay on our homepage. You know, I encourage you, uh, you know, and or your staffs to look into any anything that you want to have more information about. And of course, um, we are available anytime anybody wants to talk to us about any of these things, uh, because we're in a mode, or uh, we most certainly try to be in a mode of continuous improvement with, with all of our practices, analyses, and our role in the region. And then I guess I, I just put this slide in because this is a rendering that we had done, or I guess image that we had done for ONTO 2050 that never ended up uh, having a role and thought it might just be nice to have something interesting to sit on uh, and look at while I turn to you all and ask, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, things you want to talk about about the plan update, but also uh, we would be very interested to hear if there are areas that you think that we should dig in as we begin scoping the successor plan to onto 2050. Uh, you know, 2060 perish the thought or whatever it ends up being. So, um, yeah, thank thank you everybody. Well, we thank you. Uh, it certainly is heartening to see the depth of detail and study and analysis that uh, CMAP is undertaking in the 20, onto 2050 project. And I, I'm very encouraged by the staff's involvement here. And thank you for the invitation for all of us to be able to contact you and share some concerns. I've had, as in my other role as chairman of the CMAP Council of Mayors, I've heard several of my fellow mayors express some questions about different things that are happening. And there's a couple of what I guess are described as hot spots in the area that there looks like there could be some significant and major amounts of development. So I think we're right on top of this thing. And I just wanna commend the entire CMAP staff for all that you're doing to bring this out. It's obviously you 
Your report is lengthy because there is so much to talk about and so much to consider. And so I'm hoping certainly that you'll continue to offer these updates when the policy committee meets, because I think there is a, a research and a finding exercise going on now that may open up some further ideas or questions or challenges for the region in the days ahead. Does anybody on the committee today have any questions on the ANTU 2050 program has been, been, has, has been presented? Well, thank you. I, I, I really feel very imperative that, uh, that, that this continue to be a, at the forefront of our meetings, that you continue to tell us what's going on, what you found out, and uh, maybe make, start making some recommendations as a region as to what we should or should not be doing in the days ahead. Uh, we got, what, 20, 27, 28 years before we're 2050, but uh, we certainly, it looks like it's going to be a very challenging time perhaps the most challenging time in the history of the region. So thank you for being there at the front lines to kind of lead us into the unknowns of the future. Thank you very much, Mayor Schelke and, and, every, and everyone. All right, moving then to 7-2, which is the FFY 2023 through 2028 Transportation Improvement Program. Uh, tip, uh, Kama Dobbs. Thank you, Mayor Schalke, and good morning, everyone. Um, very brief today, just a reminder that really every four years, um, we get reminded that there's more to the TIP than just the list of projects that's regu regularly amended by our transportation committee, as well as by this body. Uh, the transportation improvement program as a whole document describes how we conduct the metropolitan planning and programming process in the region, and is a tool for collaboration between government agencies and a way for the public to track the use of local, state, and federal transportation funds. Since the adoption of the federal fiscal year 2019 to 2024 TIP back in October of 2018, we've had the enactment of Rebuild Illinois and the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act at both the state and federal levels, and the proposed updates to ONTU 2050 that Elizabeth just highlighted. All of these changes are reflected in the draft federal fiscal year 2023 to 2028 TIP document, along with some expanded discussion of the process for submittal and approval of TIP amendments and updates to the fund sources and work types to uh, bring us up to date on the things that we're using. The draft federal fiscal year 2023 to 2028 tip will be available for public review and comment concurrent with the plan update from June 10th to August 13th. And we'll come back to the transportation committee in September for their consideration to recommend approval to you and to the CMET board in October. Um, that was really all I had as an update. This is kind of a, uh, standard regulatory item, but happy to answer any questions about uh, the changes that we've made in the TIP document to bring it up to date. Any questions of CAMA this morning? Well, again, do you thank you and your staff at CMAP for being kind of at the front end of all this stuff, and there's a lot of moving parts there to it. Uh, having been worked with you now for a number of years, I've always been very impressed with how tightly tightly uh, held you keep all this stuff so that nothing slips through the cracks or gets forgotten or we come up with some bad controversial thing. Yeah. You guys really do a nice job for us. So thank you. You're welcome, Mayor Shelke. It is definitely our pleasure. All right, then moving to uh, 7.3 uh, on to 2050 update of the 2023 through 2028 TIP conformity analysis and TIP amendment, Russell Petros Petrowski, Petrowski. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, <clears throat> so included in your packet today was uh, the conformity amendment in a memo that will be going out for public comment. Uh, to help provide some additional context to the conformity amendment, I have a very brief presentation. Uh, so we can get the slides up. There we go, next slide. As seen on the slide, there are several ozone non-attainment classifications. Until recently, the region was classified as serious non-attainment for the 2008 standard and marginal for the 2015 standard. At the end of May, US EPA said that the region was an attainment of the 2008 standard. Currently, the region is classified as marginal for the 2015 ozone NAX, but will soon be reclassified to moderate and likely serious in 2024. So what does this mean? As the region gets bumped up in classifications, there are more restrictions on emissions, such as from factories and power plants. However, because we are already classified as serious, 
under the 2008 standard, these restrictions are already in place. One you may be familiar with is when you bring your car in to get the tailpipe emissions checked. That is a direct result of our ozone non-attainment status. Next slide, please. How do we know we are violating the ozone standards? Uh, Illinois EPA has a number of ozone monitors throughout the region, which are shown on this slide. Anytime a monitor has four or more exceedances in the year, uh, the region is in violation of the ozone standards. So all the ones highlighted in yellow. Uh, and this slide is actually from last summer. Uh, as you can see, last summer, five monitors uh, had more than four violations. Next slide. There is also one monitor that is just over the border in Wisconsin that is also part of our reach to non-attainment area. That's the Chiwaki monitor. Um, so how this works is that the region has what is called a design value, which is the three-year average of the fourth highest reading from one of the monitors. The monitor with the highest reading is referred to as the controlling monitor. Currently, that is the Chiwaki monitor. Based on the monitor readings over the last two years, combined with this year, the 2020 to 2022 three-year average already exceeds the ozone standards, and we are really just at the beginning of summer. Um, it's possible next uh, week we might see some violations as the, the weather heats up. Um, so the design value is likely to increase from its current 73, and that's with no violations so far this summer. Uh, at the end of last summer, the design value was 75. So likely we're going to be near the 75 uh, number, which is far in exceedance of the 70 number that is the standard. Next slide, please. What is CMAP's responsibility? Our part is transportation conformity. Under the Clean Air Act, we are required to demonstrate that projects in the TIP conform to the motor vehicle emissions budget for our region. We do this through a regional emissions analysis of transportation projects that are in the TIP. Specifically, projects in the TIP subject to air quality analysis requirements demonstrate when model that the region does not exceed our motor vehicle emissions budget, which is shown near the end of the memo that was contained in the packet. In November of 2020, the US EPA released a new emissions model. CMAP is not required to switch to that model until January 2023, but we thought it would be best to use the new model for the plan update. It wasn't easy to switch as this is a complicated technical exercise and there are a lot of staff work that went and there is a lot of staff work that went into preparing all the new data sets, testing the model, analyzing the results within a, what, what is considered a relatively short period of time. But with the efforts of numerous staff members, we were able to switch to the new model just in time for the plan update. Uh, the slide goes over some of the highlights of the new model, so I'm not gonna rehash that. Of note, though, is using the new model, VOC emissions show a decline, while NOx emissions show an increase compared to previous conformity modeling results. This is primarily attributable to how the new model calculates emissions, not to changes in the TIP or in onto 2050. And then finally, I want to emphasize that ozone, in particular, is a regional problem. It is not a point-specific problem, so it affects the entire region. Uh, in even areas outside of our specific region, such as the Chiwaki Monitor, and uh, there are monitors that go off in Michigan all the time, and that is primarily because of ozone that is generated in the Chicago region and deposited on the other side of the lake. Next slide. And that is my presentation. So if there are any questions about conformity, uh, the memo in your packet, um, I can take those at any time or at this time. Thank you. Any questions of Russell today? Well, thank you for your good work and your, your, your folks in there because this is certainly a top topic that's not going to go away and the numbers seemingly keep rolling in the wrong direction. So uh, obviously as a region, we're going to have to be taking some significant alter actions here over the next few years. So appreciate your good efforts and kind of finding out where it is and what we can maybe do. So thank you very much. Okay, moving then to uh, other business. Do we have any other business before the committee that anybody would like to bring up? I don't hear anything. So then let's go to public comment. Do we have any comments from the public? Good morning, Mayor Shelke. This is Garland Armstrong calling from Des Moines, Iowa and the MPO Policy Committee meeting. How y'all doing in Chicago? 
No, we're doing pretty good here. How are you doing out there in Iowa? So far, coming along good. The weather here is nice, and they said it might rain later on this afternoon. So I just want to say um, thanks to Arlene um, for her awesome um, um, performance at, at for the MPO Policy Committee meeting, and she will definitely be missed from me and Heather, and we had a good chance to see her a couple of years before we left, and we just wanted to say that whenever ever we bump into each other, tell her to come on out here because she could see how Iowa is a lot different there as a getaway. And also too, and for y'all doing a great job and I'll be watching y'all this coming Wednesday for, for Pace and and you tell everybody at the Pace headquarters say hi to us and, and then we will make sure that if you need any help from us like down the road, so for some suggestions, you can call on us and then we can help you guys along the way with any ideas or anything you can think of that you need from us. So just want to say hi to y'all and good luck with the keep up with it and make sure to keep up with the seniors who are disabled there and making sure that they really get the access that they really want. Like you said, Mayor Schalke, because in your area, Seniors who are disabled over there too need all the good resources they need and maybe the same thing too with individuals with disabilities. So keep up the good work and make sure to get that goal to 100% what you need. So we'll all be pulling for it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Appreciate your good continued efforts even though you're in another state. Appreciate your interest and best wishes. Uh, Thanks. Mayor Schilke, we do have a couple of public comments here. I'd like to recognize David Simmons, Executive Director of RIDE Illinois, who wanted to comment on the ONTO 2050 plan update and regionally significant projects. David. Great, thank you. Good morning, uh, Executive Director uh, Elman, Mayor Schilke, members of the CMAP Policy Committee and guests. Uh, my name is Dave Simmons. Uh, I'm Executive Director of RIDE Illinois. Uh, we are your statewide nonprofit bike advocacy organization. Um, we've been advocating on behalf of people who ride bikes for the past 30 years, and as a lifelong resident of Cook County, I do appreciate this opportunity to provide a public comment on policies related to transportation in the CMAP region and the state of Illinois. Uh, ride Illinois is very excited about the once in, a, in multiple generations, maybe lifetime opportunity that the anticipated influx of funding from the IIJA provides. Uh, and I, we certainly realize that IDOT, CMAP, CDOT, county transportation departments, transit agencies, and others have a great responsibility to ensure that these funds are used wisely to improve and transform transportation for Illinois residents, businesses, and visitors. So that being said, I'd like to specifically comment on CMAP's regional, regionally significant projects uh, that are included in the ONTO 2050 plan. Um, the plan on the website, CMAP website notes that the plan focuses um, particularly on projects that reconstruct or enhance the existing transportation network with few expansion projects. So Ride Illinois uh, is encouraged that CMAP specifically notes that highway and arterial, arterial roadway expansion is not the solution. Uh, time and time again, studies have, and data have shown that widening highways and or adding travel lanes does not lead to reduce congestion and improve travel times. In fact, the opposite is often the case. Uh, in addition, expanding roadways also leads to an increase in average daily traffic, vehicle miles traveled, harmful emissions, congestion, et cetera. And all those have negative impacts on uh, Illinois communities uh, and residents. So from the perspective of people who ride a bike uh, for transportation or um, recreation and those that walk as well, um, including lots of folks who are interested in those modes, but have genuine safety concerns. Uh, roadway expansion is a major barrier. So again, excited to see that that's not being um, touted as, as that silver bullet. Uh, and over the past few, two years, as, as you are likely aware, um, average vehicle speed has increased uh, due to ve fewer vehicles being on the roadway during the pandemic. Um, and it's, you know, it's re resulted in a double digit increase in traffic fatalities, and that's percentage increase on Illinois roadways, um, thereby decreasing the interest in healthy active modes of transportation. Um, and in the end, we, we can't accept that over 1300 people dying on Illinois roadways each year is simply the cost of doing business. 
So uh, in order for Illinois and the U.S. to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and curb climate change, we really must collectively encourage Illinois residents to use their vehicles less and use non-motorized modes of transportation, such as walking and biking and micromobility and transit more often. Uh, yet the real dangers that our car-centric infrastructure and roadway expansion pose are prohibited, prohibitive, which means too many Illinois residents are essentially forced to rely on their vehicle and pay for increasing fuel prices for even short trips. So in closing, Ride Illinois strongly encourages IDOT, CMAP, CDOT, and other agencies with decision-making power to not include roadway expansion as future infrastructure projects in Illinois are planned. We look forward to working with everyone in this meeting to develop a multimodal future-focused transportation network in Illinois. And I thank you for the opportunity to share this comment uh, during this morning's meeting. Happy to address any questions or comments that the committee has. Uh, you can also reach me at dave at rideillinois.org. So thanks very much. Committee, have any questions of Dave? Well, we thank you for uh, your comments this morning and continue to stay with us in the days ahead. Uh, your group is one that we obviously have some strong connection to and, and uh, want to support because uh, you do, do, do some stuff that really helps us understand you know, the bicycle riding arena very well. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Um, I got a note here that uh, from the, in my role as I'm supposed to say, comments if any emailed prior to the meeting will be read at the meeting. And, and if you send a request through, through the chat box to make a verbal comment, I guess we will allow you to do that. Aaron, do we have anything else? That's correct. We have two more. So Kyle Whitehead from the Active Transportation Alliance has noted he wanted to uh, make remarks. So Kyle. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you, Mayor, um, and everyone else for, for having me here. I'm going to read a, a letter shortly um, signed by our organization and several other organizations uh, in relation to the regionally significant projects list. I also just want to say I, I really appreciate the comments from Dave there about bike safety and how it fits in with our broader regional transportation goals. Also uh, really heartened by the comments from the FHWA representative uh, earlier today about the urgency of the addressing the safety crisis um, and encouraged by the work that CMAP is doing with the safety action group. Um, I think working to pull together a lot of really important um, ideas. Um, the letter I'm about to read is signed by Active Transportation Alliance, Center for Neighborhood Technology, the Chicago Metro chapter of the Climate Reality Project, the Environmental Law and Policy Center, the Shared Use Mobility Center, the Illinois Environmental Council, Illinois PERG, the Illinois chapter of the Sierra Club, NRDC, and the Respiratory Health Association. Um, I'll also mention we um, shared and read this letter uh, to the Transportation Committee uh, earlier this spring, and it's also been discussed um, with CMAP's new Climate Committee. Um, so the letter reads, we are in a critical moment for the future of the Chicago area's transportation network. A wealth of federal and state funds provides opportunities to transform our streets and improve quality of life in communities across the region. We're excited about the potential for the updates to the regional plan to result in progress on our shared safety, equity, and sustainability goals. This will not happen, however, if CMAP takes a business as usual approach with this update and advances projects that increase emissions and make our streets less safe for everyone. The current list of new regionally significant projects includes a troubling number of arterial widening proposals. It is well documented how recent spikes in traffic crashes, serious injuries and fatalities can be attributed to safety issues on arterial streets. These streets already divide communities and are unsafe and uncomfortable for people walking and biking. Widening them only makes these problems worse while encouraging more people to drive and increasing emissions. Evidence shows that adding lanes to expressways and arterials does not result in long-term congestion relief for people driving because any new capacity is quickly filled up by additional cars and trucks, leading to more emissions. CMAP's current scoring criteria fail to account for this reality. In fact, projects that add new lanes to expressways are shown to reduce emissions because of supposed increases in speeds. For individual projects that add lanes to arterials, emissions impacts are not considered at all. 
Non-2050, we as a region committed to creating a modern multimodal transportation system that reduces greenhouse gas emissions and doubles transit ridership from 2018 levels. Adding 122 additional lane miles of interstates and 55 lane miles of arterials, as this list would do according to analysis by the Metropolitan Planning Council, is entirely inconsistent with these goals. To improve safety, equity, and sustainability, we need to make it easier for people to drive less, not fund projects that make it easier for them to drive more. These arterial widening projects are often framed as multimodal projects and awarded complete streets points from CMAP because they include enhanced painted crossings for people walking or mark shared lanes for people biking. This approach is flawed because it fails to acknowledge the negative effects of more car and truck traffic on people on foot and on bikes. Any incremental ben benefits from additional paint are quickly washed out by longer pedestrian crossing distances and more high speed traffic. CMAP needs to develop a better way to evaluate and score these projects that fully accounts for their long term impacts. Factors beyond vehicle speed and free flowing traffic must be more effectively measured and factored into funding decisions, particularly safety, equity, and sustainability. We urge you to remove the widening projects from this list to allow more time to fully evaluate their potential impact on the region's safety, climate, and equity goals. This is consistent with guidance from the FHWA calling for states to use new federal funds to prioritize projects that fix existing infrastructure and support multimodal travel above projects that expand road capacity. CMAP should work with partners to explore new US DOTs to support agencies flexing highway funds to projects that better deliver on safety, accessibility, and connectivity goals. CMAP staff should update and improve evaluation and scoring criteria to better reflect the long-term costs and effects of each project. Committees like this one should be provided with more information and analysis before being asked to weigh in on whether these projects should be prioritized for funding. This list features more of the same widening and resurfacing projects while doing little to change the fundamental flaws in our transportation network. From both an equity perspective and a sustainability dimension, persisting on this course would be a tragic missed opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, we appreciate your thoughtfulness and your letter and certainly something for us to consider moving forward. Appreciate it very much. Aaron, do you have somebody else? Yes, we do have one more. We received written comment from Alex McLeese, uh, received on the 8th at about 5.28 p.m. And I'm just gonna read this into the record here. He was unable to attend uh, the meeting. It says, I live in Oak Park near the Eisenhower Expressway, Harlem Avenue, and many other busy high-speed roads that touch or border residential areas. I walk and bike across my community every day. Arterial streets and highways divide the community, making it unsafe for pedestrians and bicyclists like me. Recent increases in traffic crashes, serious injuries, and fatalities are all evidence that our roads are un already unsafe for the most vulnerable road users, pedestrians, especially children, cyclists, and people with disabilities. Adding capacity to any of these highways and roads, not only in Oak Park, but all over Chicagoland, would exacerbate these safety problems. I am concerned about climate change, which affects our local area in many ways, including severe weather and widely varying lake levels. Emissions from transportation are now the largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. Investments in highways and road expansion projects will contribute to increased greenhouse gas emissions. New capacity created by adding, express, adding lanes to expressways and arterials will quickly be filled up by additional cars and trucks leading to more emissions. CMAP's scoring criteria fail to account for these additional emissions. I take the CTA Blue Line bus, uh, CTA Blue Line almost every day and would like to see investments redirected from widening projects to transit improvements. Instead of spending money on widening projects that make safety problems and climate change worse, we should invest in making multimodal transportation system a reality. That uh, concludes Alex McLeese's comments from Oak Park. And I have not had anybody else come through in the chat requesting to make public comment. All right, well, thank you. Uh, according to my script here, the next meeting is scheduled to be held jointly with the CMAP board on Wednesday, October 12, 2022. Uh, that being announced, I will entertain a motion to adjourn.
Lee County will make that motion. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Pace seconds it, Melinda Metzger. Here we have a motion and second for the adjournment. Aaron, would you please call the roll? Thank you. I dot. See that? Aye. Aye. Uh, C Matt Beal. Aye. C Matt Brawley. CTA. Cook County. Council of Mayors. Yes. DuPage County. Uh, Illinois State Toll Health Highway Authority. Yes. Kane County. Yes. Kendall County. Yes. Lake County. Yes. Henry County. Yes. Metra. Yes. Pace. Yes. RTA. Yes. Will County. And the motion carries. Yes. Motion carries. We will adjourn this meeting. I thank everybody for your participation. I think the conversation here was very high end and very responsible. And uh, I'm very pleased that we had it. And I'm sure this will lead to further conversations and understandings as we move forward. So thank you and have a good uh, day. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Oh.